In this video, we'll look at Azure Virtual Machines. We'll look at the different kinds of VM types that are available in Azure, talk about the different kinds of disks and images, and then we'll walk through an example where we see how easy it is to create a new virtual machine that contains popular libraries for data analysis. There are a couple of ways to get a virtual machine up and running on the cloud. And we're first going to look at cloud-first provisioning. What this means is that we build and configure a machine in the cloud. It does not exist as a separate physical machine anywhere beforehand. There are three ways to do this. You can build it by clicking through the Azure Management Portal, or you can write a script to do it, either on Windows or on other operating systems. Finally, you can write a program which calls the Azure REST APIs. Once your choice of provisioning is made, you will need to select the image and instance size to start from. The newly created disk will be stored in Azure's blob storage service, and your machine will boot. While we stress that Windows Azure does not only run Windows VMs, it does of course run Windows servers very well. Windows Server runs great on it, and many very popular Microsoft applications like SharePoint and SQL Server also work on Azure right out of the box. When you run Windows Server on Azure, you can run Active Directory, DNS, Fax, Print, and Document Services, IIS, and many other services. For more information on the Microsoft Server products that are supported on Azure, please consult the hyperlink shown in the slide. Only certain distributions of Linux are officially supported. SUSE Enterprise 11, Service Pack 2, OpenSUSE 12.1, CentOS 6.2, and Ubuntu 12.04. Virtual machine images of these distributions are provided by partners who are experts in each. Other distributions of Linux can be installed as bring-your-own Linux. However, some integration work will be needed. For all of these supported Windows and Linux servers, virtual machine images are available in the Azure Gallery, which is available from the new VM creation portion of the Azure portal. Virtual machines can be allocated in a variety of sizes. The ones displayed here are just the list available as of this video, but new and larger ones are being constantly added. Now let's take a look at the actual process of virtual machine creation. In the Azure portal, after clicking the big New button at the bottom, you're presented with a menu that looks like this. Select the Virtual Machine item, and then you can see the option to create a virtual machine from the gallery. When you select From Gallery, we are taken to this screen. On the left is a menu so you can filter down the list of images or look at all the images that are available. The middle section of the Image Gallery displays a list of images that you can create and store in Windows Azure. The My Images section on the far left can be populated by capturing an existing Windows Azure virtual machine, using SUSE Studio to build and migrate an image, or uploading your own virtual machine, as I'll explain later. By selecting Platform Images, we are presented with a list of just operating systems. By selecting a particular OS of interest, we get a description of it. After you select the image you want, you assign a name to the virtual machine, specify a size, and create the administrator's login name and password for a Windows operating system, or specify the authentication method for a Linux operating system. Some platform images have minimum size recommendations noted in the image description. Another place to get virtual machines is the VM Depot. This is a Microsoft-operated but user-contributed repository of virtual machine images. Because disks are an important aspect of how virtual machines work, we'll take a little time to talk about them and their configuration on Windows Azure. Here's a screenshot of a running Windows virtual machine. You can see that there is an OS disk, which serves as the C drive. This appears to the virtual machine as a SATA disk that is persistent across reboots of the VM. There is also a D drive labeled temporary storage. This is also a SATA disk, but it is not persistent. This means that if the VM powers down and then powers up, the data stored there will be lost. However, the disk is local to the virtual machine, meaning that it has a very fast connection. There can then be any number of data disks attached to the machine. These are stored in the Azure Blob service and are persistent. However, they appear as SCSI and not as SATA drives. There are some important differences between the OS disk and data disks, as highlighted on the slide. Data disks are larger than the OS disk and can be added and removed without rebooting the system but they cannot be imaged. Also, for tuning system performance, the cache behavior of the OS disk is probably preferable. As I mentioned earlier, 
The OS disk and the data disks for your virtual machine are stored in the Azure Storage Service. This means that not only is the data persistent across reboots, but also they inherently share the same intrinsic benefits of anything that uses Azure Storage. They are highly durable, being replicated three times within a data center, and then another three times in a second geographically distinct data center. Now let's look in more detail at virtual machine images themselves. So far, we've talked about disks for the virtual machine and the various types of them. An image is a different kind of thing. Images are base operating systems which can be cloned and then started up as new virtual machines. They have been sysprepped and cleaned and can only be created by upload or by capturing. A disk, however, is a container for data that is exposed into the running virtual machine. You can upload your own virtual hard drive file and mount that as a data disk, or you can create new ones during virtual machine creation. One of the nice things about VM images is that you can then transport a machine from your facility into the cloud. One of the key benefits of infrastructure as a service is flexibility and control. The Windows Azure solution provides the capability of not only moving VHDs to the cloud, but also allows you to copy the VHDs back down and run it locally or on another cloud provider. This is great for testing out production issues or any other need where you require a copy of the production server. Another use case is when you already have a golden image your institution uses for server provisioning, or you have a VM running on premises that you would just like to run in the Azure Data Center. First, you upload the VHD to a storage account. From there, use the portal to add it as an image, if it's already been sysprepped, or as a disk, if it's a pre-configured VM. Then you can spin up one or more virtual machines using it. The Azure VM Gallery is really the easiest way to get up and running with new virtual machines on Azure. These are pre-configured, high-quality virtual machine images, which have been built by Microsoft and partners. The Azure portal assists the creation and configuration of new machines by grabbing information like SSH keys and assisting with proper drive provisioning. However, Azure also supports very well the use cases of customers that want to bring their own Linux. The customer is responsible for creating their own Linux image and capturing the configuration appropriately. It's important to note that the OS must be running under a Hyper-V virtual machine. If you're using VMware, the VMDK file can be converted using Microsoft Virtual Machine Converter. Now let's walk through creating a simple virtual machine using the VM Depot. This machine will include a variety of popular data analysis tools like RStudio and Python. We will look at provisioning the machine, configuring it, and ultimately, we will demonstrate connecting to a running IPython notebook instance on our new VM. The image for our virtual machine is stored in the VM Depot. The VM Depot is a library of open source virtual machine images that the online community has contributed. You can browse the depot and start a new virtual machine based on an image you find there, or you can add your own image to the VM Depot to share with others. Although the VM Depot site is maintained by Microsoft, Microsoft does not manage, screen, or provide support for the contributed images. To access the depot, you can browse the website at vmdepot.msopentech.com. Here we can see there are many images created by users and uploaded to the VM Depot. The one we're interested in for this video is the Azure Data Analysis one. Clicking on the image title takes us to a more detailed information page about the image, including a list of which regions it's available in and the endpoints that are available in the image once it's created. Another way to browse the VM Depot is via the Azure Management Portal. Here, I've signed into the portal, and I've clicked on the Virtual Machines tab on the left. I can click the Images link at the top, and now I can see there's a link for Browse VM Depot at the bottom. Clicking on this brings up a UI within the Azure Management Portal that lists the same images as on the web page. We'll scroll down to Azure Data Analysis, and we can see the same information here. To actually add this image to our account, we click the Next button, and now we can specify the region we want to copy it into and the storage account to use. By clicking the check mark, we will start the copy of the image. Note that this particular image is very large and it will take it roughly 20 to 30 minutes to copy. We can see the copy begins and will take a little while. Here's another copy of the image I've made before. Once the image is finished copying, we simply need to register it with our account and now we can actually create new virtual machines using this image. To do so, we simply click New, 
virtual machine from gallery and on the left under my images we'll see the name of the image we just copied first we need to enter a virtual machine name then we choose the size of the machine we want we create then the username and a password now it's very important for us to remember to write down the username and password or store it in a password manager. If we forget these, there's no way for Microsoft to retrieve them and we must reset the virtual machine. This next pane sets up a simple cloud service for this virtual machine. It's okay if you don't know exactly what a cloud service is. They're not really the topic of this video, so I won't say too much about them, except that they're a way to create dynamic, scalable web services using Azure VMs and its messaging infrastructure. Since these are built using VMs, this pane appears here. In our case, we're just spinning up a single node of our Azure Data Analysis VM, so we can create a new cloud service. We need to ensure that our cloud service name is unique within the cloudapp.net domain, and also we should make sure that the region is the same as where the image is located. By default, the only endpoint defined on this virtual machine is the SSH one. We need to add a few more. In order to play with the Spark and Shark project, we need to add a mapping for a port 4040. Now we can click the check mark and Azure will start creating our virtual machine. We can see that the provisioning process has started and after a few minutes, the dashboard will show the status as running. Now our virtual machine is running. We'll use PuTTY to SSH into it. The address we put in is the same as what we typed in during the VM configuration. We can also see the host name here. The username and password is the same that we configured as well in the VM configuration wizard. Great, now we're logged in. What we can do is start the IPython notebook on this machine and connect to it with our web browser. IPython was already installed on this image. Okay, let's use our browser and navigate to it. Now we have to use HTTPS and we'll click here to accept the self-signed certificate and continue to the website. Now the password that IPython Notebook is expecting is the one that was created by the folks that created this VM. In this case it is capital E L A S T A C L O U D 123 Elastic Cloud 123. And now we're in. We can create a new notebook and then start evaluating Python code. In IPython Notebook, to execute the cell, we hit Shift-Enter. And here we have an inline plot from Matplotlib. Now let's go back to PuTTY and reset our password. We'll shut down the server and we can start up Python, import the IPython module, and run the password function. And now we'll enter our new password. Now we need to copy this password value, the hash value, and we need to edit the file user.ipython profile nb server python notebook config.py and down here where it says notebook password we need to put the new password value that we generated and now we'll exit and save and our notebook server we'll start with this new password we created. Now I use the nano editor, but you can use whatever text editor you would like that is installed on this VM. 